what up so in this video we are going to talk about the changes that ui path recently introduced in their web application and this can be quite tricky because last time i used it was about a year back and if you're using it for the first time or not even first time if you're, if you're familiar with the old ui then this might be slightly confusing for you or it can be you know straightforward as well but for me it is quite confusing and i've seen a lot of questions in ui path forums and so uh I thought let's why not let's make a video on this to uh, guide you through step by step process pardon me for this noise it just happens anyways yeah so what i was saying is that uh, i wanted to make uh, i wanted to create a video in which you have a step by step guide on you know to initiate a process from uipath orchestrator and run it in your local machine or wherever you set up let's say on the cloud wherever you set up it could be triggered there so that's the idea and yeah that's that's pretty much about it so let's get started so i'll just go to my ui path and so this thing remains almost same as it was you have this option to download my path once you register you will ask you for organization you can create i created my own organization and then which is idea pa and then after that you can you know uh, uh, set up tenants within that organization and like for the free version they allow one tenant so i think i have to delete my existing idea pa but anyways we are going to do that because let's make it really clear and we can do everything from scratch so i'll just go to admin and delete this tenant and once i write it spidey rpa it will also get disconnected from my ui path assistant so i just created a simple file let's go and check it out so which basically just opens a window and uh, and just clear it up and create a new sequence hello world ui path orchestrator okay so this this entire video is majorly about like from you know connecting your part with orchestrator and then triggering the script from there and maybe if it is required to make videos on how to you know invoke those scripts not from just orchestrator but from some restful services if that is required i'll make two videos on those topic in future as well but let's get started so i'll just quickly go to activity grab a message box and let's say hello world from ui part and now i need to go to my ui part assistant so here we go and you as you can see it is disconnected because just now i deleted my tenant go to preferences orchestrator settings it's disconnected and yeah so i'll just keep a copy of this one and now since there is no tenant i will add a new tenant let's again name that tenant the same name which i used to give by default you are supposed to give only specific permissions but for me i'm going to use it for almost everything so i'm giving it almost all like all the permissions later you can modify it you can just stick to default nothing is going to change but for my use case in future i'll be using it so now i'm give, going to give all the permissions okay or maybe i'll just uh, stick to the default permissions and maybe i'll create a new one so uh, let's name the id rpa and then with the demo okay and here you can have the uh, like a theme color it depends but for now i'll just stick to this and save so my tenant is created now i can just go to orchestrator from here and i can directly click here so if i click here it redirects me to the orchestrator page and here you can see like lot of new things i'll just go and exit like let's say you have robots but you cannot just see how to create robots from here then your machines packages i mean uh, overall it has it, it is similar to great extent but it's still a bit confusing like i was really confused how to create an attendant robot so i went here then i checked everything i was not able to figure it out then i realized okay there is something called admin panel where you can see your user groups and everything so yeah like there's lot of things going on in here but let's start so first what we will do is we will first uh, run this script i'll show what it does it's self explanatory but let's see it just says hello welcome to my path so that's all it does so let's first set up our my path uh assistant file to sign it out now it will pop up a sign out window now i'll again go click on disconnect now mm, okay now i need to create a machine so i'll just go to machines add a new machine add a standard machine name and this has to be the name which is in our ui path assistant so i'll just copy paste it this is my native machine for demo and testing purposes you can give any description you want and then we want one production and attendant one testing and attendant and provision okay so our machine is provisioned now i'll quickly copy the machine key go back to my assistant orchestrator url spidey rp instead it is now spidey rp demo and this machine key will be this and yeah i think connection should work yeah it's working and it's unlicensed so i need to sign in so i'll click on sign in it will open a pop up i'll go open 
and now I think it should be all with sign out license okay so we are good with this now one thing is done now now it says no robots so let's set up our robots so again we are not supposed to do it here we are going supposed to do it from manage access go to the user which is your user you can create multiple users and assign robots to them in my case I, since I don't only have one user I'll go there Shyam Sahil no role selected you don't need to for now then you need to go to next set now attended robot is already enabled and attended I need to enable run foreground automations here I'll just go to my terminal so CMD who am I and I'll just copy who am I and paste it here and the password you are supposed to enter your uh, windows machine password whether it is pin number or password whatever you use and yeah you don't need to select one, one job at a time go to next here you can set up some uh, settings how you're going to if you are doing some web scraping then what it is supposed to look like if it is supposed to be of specific resolution height and all those things and yeah like literally i don't need to change these so update and now the robot is created so i'll just quickly create one more folder so i'll go to folder add a folder which i'll name as spidey rpa demo okay and this is folder is created for demo purposes to demonstrate UI path orchestrator triggers okay create and then just close it up yeah so once we are ready now what we can do is go back to our process publish UI path dot files give whatever release notes description you want to this is a demo package just for testing just for maybe triggering UI path files from orchestrator okay next then custom url if you want to in our case since we are using a process feed so whatever you want to ingest into you know workspace you select workspace otherwise processes so what will happen is if i select workspace it will be visible to my workspace but if i select processes it will be visible to both shared and these folders okay so that is the difference so because i want processes i'll select this and go to next then certificate i don't need timestamp and all these things i don't need so i'll just go and click publish okay and since uh, now the publisher is successful, so we should go here and refresh the page. Okay, and yeah, so let's go to processes. And we cannot see any process, so let's add one new process. And yeah, here we can see it. Main dot seven is the entry point, version is 1.0.8. That we could, okay, I closed the window, but I think we could see it here. So as you can see, current version is 1.0.8, which we published last time. And that's what it shows here. And now main dot seven file. So now we go to next and package requirements there's no specific requirements so I'll just go to next again display name uh, you can have your own name here so demo message box process so this is my display name if you want you can check so that it cannot be stored by UI path assistant because the thing the how, what, what I understand and what I read and what I record is the orchestrator is going to trigger this process from UI path assistant so if you want to take control over UI path assistant so that this process cannot be stopped by UI path assistant as well in that case you are going to check these options otherwise you can just select them and check and I prefer them and check so that in case I want to stop it from my assistant I can stop it now this is done so go to create and yeah our process is ready so hopefully let's test it out so I'll go and start a job now it asks me how to start it so job priority normal robot I will select the robot which I created machine and you can see there's no results found so I need to leave this page I need to go to settings and yeah these this was also something which was quite confusing to me here you can see machines there's no machine so manage machines and folder and I'm going to click it and update now this machine is available for this particular folder for this entire whatever is inside this so now I can again go back to my home page go to processes and then start a job and here I want to use my robot and go to this machine and I think everything else is fine so let's start it so command is sent so you can see okay yeah and hello world from UI path so this is all everything you need to do in your new UI path the robot and set all the setup to trigger a process from orchestrator I hope you found this video insightful and I hope you found it helping because there is a lot of things that have changed from previous versions and so it can be quite confusing and it can be time taking to figure out all of these so I tried to cover all of them and I'm sure if you followed these steps, you're not going to get stuck anywhere unless they do some more changes. So yeah, that's pretty much about this video. And one more thing I wanted to share is if you're looking to edit users and groups, you can just go to account and groups. You can see robot accounts. Uh, you can see different groups and authentication settings. In case if you are looking to alter these settings, you can find it in admin section. So yeah, that's all about this video. I hope you liked it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and have a nice day. Goodbye.